Hello there, people of the internet. I get a lot of flack for this rifle. This is my M16 inspired build. This is a, a KE arms lower and a PSA upper. And obviously this thing has some A1 stuff going on with it, some A2 stuff going on with it, some A4 stuff going on with it. It's like a hybrid of all sorts of stuff, but it's definitely a retro inspired build. But I get a lot of flack from a lot of people for this thing. YouTube reviewer, take note on how this right here is not a machine gun and has a 20 round magazine. This is a rifle that is in full compliance with YouTube's community guidelines. But I get a lot of flack for this thing simply because there's the purists out there who are like, hey, this isn't to exact spec, so it's wrong and you should throw it into a fire pit and just bury it and get rid of it forever. And then there's people out there who hate it because, well, they just like hating it. They think that it's an ugly build with the KP-15 lower and whatnot and how it doesn't really add up to anything. I, I, I get a lot of flack for this. But the people who actually see it in real life and they pick it up and they see just how unbelievably lightweight this rifle is, it really catches them off guard. And I think that there's a lot that can be said for a lightweight rifle. Let me adjust my camera here. There we go. I think there's, there's a lot to be said for a lightweight rifle. This right here does have the means to be able to mount a sling to it if you feel like mounting a sling to it. I don't have a sling mounted this thing because I don't really use it for any practical applications. I more or less just use this one as a range toy. But uh, the amount of people who grab this thing and they expect something heavier, well we have ourselves a complete polymer lower and we have ourselves a rifle that doesn't have bells and whistles and add-ons. and add -ons. We got ourselves an aluminum receiver upper. We got ourselves a nice lightweight handguard on this thing. We got ourselves a thin pencil, pencil barrel on this thing. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of additions to this thing. And this thing is, uh, I don't know, if I had to make a rough guesstimation for just how heavy this thing was, I'd say five and a half to six pounds maybe. It is exceptionally light. Now, the heaviest part by far is going to be that barrel. And I have a 20 inch barrel on this thing simply because I was going for that old school build. But if I did decide to use this for any practical application, and there is a chance that I might end up doing that simply because this is by far my lightest built rifle. If I uh, decided to use this for practical applications, then that longer barrel would get me more velocity, which would translate to more energy put onto its target. Now, my actual practical firearm is a 16-inch barrel versus this one right here, which is a 20-inch. Now, there's going to be about 300 or so feet per second of velocity between those. On average, the 20 or the 16-inch barrel, 223, will get about 2,900-ish feet per second, maybe 2,950. Whereas something like a 20-inch barrel would get more around the realms of 3,200 feet per second. Now that right there is a, uh, a pretty incredible uh, difference in velocities. So you would have the same amount of resources, the same amount of ammunition, the same amount of stuff on your person, but with that extra four inches of barrel length, you would be dr uh, dramatically increasing the amount of uh, energy that you put onto your target as opposed to having something that is a 16 inch barrel. So that is just a little uh, tidbit, a little rant of uh, why I like longer barreled ARs because you can utilize the same amount of resources to get more power. And with this right here being a pencil barrel and this build being exceptionally light, I don't necessarily have to worry about that additional barrel length adding on much weight. If I had to make a rough estimation, I'd say maybe an ounce or two. It's not going to be a dramatic amount, not like if I were to mount a bunch of accessories to an AR. Like I have this one over here, which I just so happen to have sitting on a tree. This is my Radical AR. This is also in compliance to YouTube's community guidelines. This one has sights and optics, and we have flashlights and slings, and we got a really heavy barrel uh, profile for sustained fire. We got an M-Lock handguard. Uh, this right here is definitely not a lightweight rifle. As a matter of fact, this one right here has a loaded magazine inside of it, and it is still significantly lighter than this one right here. And this one is significantly larger than this one right here. So this is a very very lightweight. Now I'm not exactly trudging around in the jungles of Vietnam, but I do trudge around in the jungles of Florida. I am a, well, I'm a hunter and I go out and a lot of times I'll do, uh, I can't remember what it's called, the kind of hunting where you walk around and you actually track down your animals and uh, you don't sit stationary in one area. And I hunt with a lot of milsurps and whatnot. And a lot of these milsurps are exceptionally heavy. 
like way, way too heavy for my own comfort zone. And I feel like just from my own experience and the weights that I'm used to walking around with, I have some sporterized rifles and some polymer rifles that I take hunting with me as well. And uh, I feel like those lightweight rifles are more on par with something like this. And many of those don't have slings because they simply don't have sling attachments. If I were to throw a sling on this thing and lug this thing around with how unbelievably lightweight it is, I feel like I could achieve some pretty significant ground with a lightweight rifle like this. Now, this right here is chambered in 223.556. I've just got some 55 grain cheap steel case stuff inside of this thing. But with this chambered in 223.556, that's a very lightweight cartridge as well. However, especially out of a longer barrel, boy is it a capable cartridge. That 3200 feet per second can pierce uh, certain types of body armor at uh, specific ranges. And it is definitely uh, not necessarily something I want to go after like large game with, but we have seen medium and small game hunted with a 223 556 cartridge on numerous occasions, especially if you bump it up to a heavier grain projectile than just the uh, 55 grains that I have inside of this thing. This is a 1 in 7 twist barrel, so I would be able to stabilize those heavier grain projectiles. However, I myself cannot really shoot accurately past 100 yards or so let alone 300, let alone 500, let alone beyond 500, which is where you would really need that uh, accuracy from bullet stabilization. Now, this right here, this, this particular, this particular AR build is a sub MOA gun with the right ammunition. I have shown that off on this channel. Feel free to go watch those videos. As a matter of fact, I think it was a collaboration video that I had done with others where we had ourselves a competition and we were seeing who could get the best groups at uh, 50 yards or something like that. And uh, I walked away the victor with a sub MOA group out of this particular rifle rocking 193 M193 ammunition. So the accuracy of the rifle is absolutely there for the capabilities of whatever shooter is holding it. I am not the shooter with that capabilities. But I do know that within like 300 yards or so, this would be such an ideal rifle because of how dramatically accurate it is and how lightweight it is. If you were to use this for a practical application of any sort, as a matter of fact, I mean, I actually use that Radical as like my coyote gun and go-to gun for just handling things out here in the field because we have all sorts of animals and critters that get into the garbage and harass our animals and they go after the cows and it's just, it's just, it's just a mess. With lack of better terminology, it's just a mess. And something like this right here would make a fantastic practical rifle. It doesn't even necessarily have to be like for an end of the world taking on other humans style of rifle. You could use this rifle for a good number of different applications, especially since you can fire heavier weight projectiles inside of this thing since it has a 1 in 7 twist barrel. Now, I was thinking about going with a 1 in 12 twist barrel, but that dramatically uh, decreases the types of projectiles that you could use so i did end up going with a one in seven twist and uh well with these 155 grain projectiles these are going to stabilize just fine for the 40 yards that we're at while i send some lead down at our microwave which i have sitting down there convenient conveniently now normally you know there's there's a wasp nest inside of that thing actually and it feels really good sending some lead at that Normally, with a very lightweight rifle, you have increased recoil, and this one is no exception. If I were to take this side-by-side -side with my uh, heavier radical right there, like dramatically heavier radical, that one feels like firing a pellet gun versus this, which you know you're firing a rifle. However, the 223.556, especially 55 grain projectiles, is still an incredibly light recoiling cartridge. So, even with the increased recoil, it is not anything significant that I would ever even consider worrying about. So what do you guys think? Do you prefer the lighter weight build or do you prefer something heavier? Of course, there would need to be attachments onto this to make it more practical for a modern application, especially if you are thinking that you're probably going to go up against modern applications. Uh, if I had this and was going to use it for a practical application, 110% I would throw a sling on this and I'd probably swap out this uh, uh, rear carry handle for a flip up sight hanging optic of some kind, maybe something that was offset so my front post right here didn't impede on that optic. But I would have my iron sights, I would have my optic, I would have my sling, and I'd probably throw on some kind of really small, lightweight, white light 
uh, maybe get myself like one of those little cheapo uh, surefires that I could just kind of mount onto this thing. Somehow, as a matter of fact, <laughs> I have a bayonet handle and I might just take the little uh, uh, attachment, just cut that off with the bayonet, slap it on there and kind of uh, screw a Picatinny rail onto that and then have my little flashlight there and that would be my flashlight mount. Nice and lightweight, slim profile. That would be a funny option. I feel like that would be interesting to do. I'm not gonna do that because I don't want to ruin my bayonet. But yeah, what do you guys think? What do you guys prefer? Do you prefer the lightweight option or the heavier option? There's benefits for the heavier options as well, but just with what I do and how I move around, I'd probably take the lightweight rifle if I was going to be using it for any real legitimate practical purposes. That being said, thanks for watching, folks. I appreciate your time. Like, subscribe, share. Description below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go check it out. You guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day. It looks like we got some weather coming in, so I'm going to go ahead and pack it in and get the hell out of here. done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> the poor man's Garen. <laughs> Shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.